What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another weather forecast here by Adrian Weather Forecast. And in this video, we're going to be doing more of a different type of upload. We're not going to be talking about the tropics, nor will we be talking about severe weather. For the first time in a while, we're going to be mentioning fall, and we're going to be doing my, my first thoughts video on the 2021 fall and see whether it can very well be snowy and cold for many here. We have officially been in summer for a few days, so I thought, why not talk about the next season, and that is going to be fall. So a lot of you guys have been talking about fall and winter forecasts. So as we get deeper into July, I'll be seeing a, you guys will be seeing a lot more videos. And obviously, in the first week of August, we have fall and winter week, so we are just getting started for these exciting uploads. And hopefully I can do my first winter thaw video in about a few weeks here. But without further ado, let's get get ahead and get in the forecast. First thing I wanted to do is go ahead and go look at the uh, EPAC and just General Pacific SST so we can get a better look at what we're seeing right now. So at the moment we are actually at the at this point, we're kind of seeing more of an Enzo neutral. We kind of do have these warm waters kind of across the uh, uh, northwest South America coast, but we do have some cooler waters into the Central Pacific, including portions of the 3.4 region index or region in general. But overall, we're starting to see a kind of just overall just disorganized SS seasons. They're very, very inconsistent. And that's why we've been seeing this 3.4 status number kind of say more of an, at a higher end neutral, getting close to an El Nino. But I do doubt, I do doubt we will see an El Nino this this winter. I think an Enzo neutral is most likely to continue throughout the fall. But as you do see, we kind of do have some really cold temperatures off across portions of the Southwest uh, United States. But overall, we're kind of sitting at a uh, kind of Enzo neutral. That's kind of sitting at the moment at a and at a just overall Enzo neutral, so we're kind of neither at a La Nina or El Nino status. So typically, we can we can kind of get a better idea. Obviously, these SSCs will be far different now compared to once we get towards the actual first day of fall, September, late September. But obviously, this could get us a better idea of what we are expecting, whether we're seeing it Enzo neutral now, La Nina or El Nino, and whether that will continue, which is exactly why I'm showing you guys these SSTs. So here's looking at the actual 3.4 El Nino, or actually Enzo uh, uh, region 3.4 index. And as you do see, it is completely different to the last time we actually checked this. I actually think the last time we did check a look at this 3.4 region index was, I believe, in either May or April. And boy, has it changed quite a bit. We are now dramatically rising, not only past the actual general neutral uh, phase, but we're also getting very close to an El Nino. We actually did reach up to almost, uh, actually, I believe over positive 0 0.2. So we were 0 0.3 away from actually getting El Nino status. But obviously, it would have to stay like that for a few weeks, if not months, for it to be official in El Nino. But it is now kind of decreasing a little bit. So, like I did say, overall, I do think we will be st sticking at a neutral. Throughout much of this winter, there is a very high chance of that, and as well, I do think this Enzo neutral will continue even into fall, which will obviously give us a better idea of what we're expecting. Because if it was at El Nino, we can get a better idea, obviously, of what we can see for this fall. Uh, if it was a La Nina, we can get a better, better idea. But now, since we kind of have a better idea, it's going to most likely stick at an Enzo neutral, like it's been for a few weeks here. That it's expected to very well stay like that, which can give us a better idea. Obviously, it's still very far out, and it can very well become a La Nina by the time it gets to fall, maybe even late fall. But at the moment, we're looking like there's the best chance is to see an Enzo neutral uh, for the months of fall. Before I do get deeper into the actual models and long range forecast, I want to give you guys a better idea of the Enzo neutral up or, or the Enzo update. Um, so at the moment, what we're kind of seeing just overall in the loop. We are looking like we're going to be seeing Enzo neutrals conditions are present right now in the tropical Pacific, which is exactly we're watching after the 3.4 region. That's the tropical and central Atlantic. And as you do see, they new NOAA forecasters are, are thinking that this will obviously continue throughout much, if not all the summer, and even slightly favor to continue into the fall. And although it is close between the possible La Nina coming back in the current neutral, it is likely uh, that this neutral will continue, if not even re redevelop into a La Nina for the late fall into winter. So basically, out of all of that, we are going to be seeing an Enzo neutral for summer, uh, and that will most likely carry on into fall. 
and then Alanya does have a chance to possibly redevelop later on into the late fall, early winter stage. So overall, it looks like a Enzo neutral is going to be favored, according to Noah, throughout much of the fall, and maybe even a chance for Alanya to pop back once again by the time we actually get towards late fall and even early winter. The thing about that is we have to get to La Nina status for a few weeks for it to be official, so we can very well be seeing La Nina type characteristics for the whole fall, because we may get past, if not even far below negative 0.5 degrees Celsius in maybe even September or October, so there is a chance overall it may be a new neutral throughout much of the season, but we can very well be seeing La Nina type characteristics. So here we are right now in uh, May, June, July. There is obviously an 80% basically for a neutral to continue. And it'll slightly decrease to around a 75% by uh, June, July, and August. And still even by this early, early portion of, of the um, early, early portion of the fall by August, September, and October, we still have around a 55% chance for a neutral. So although it's still kind of favored towards neutral, it does decrease and become a lot more even with La Nina. So exactly like Noah stated, that it's likely to continue into the early fall and much of fall in general, but chances for La Nina developing do increase by the time we get towards around the late fall, early winter. And obviously fall does end by December 20th. So we're talking still late December. So... As we now get into September, October, November, and this neutral is still, uh, still at around 50%. So actually, it's going to be 50% neutral, 42% something like that for La Nina, and around like an 88% for an El Nino. So like I did say, El Nino is going to remain very unlikely. So although it's very, very close to an El Nino, it's way closer to El Nino than La Nina, it's very, very unlikely for an El Nino to actually develop this year or even next year at all basically we have not had an el nino status in i believe since 2019 or something like that but by now uh, uh by now uh october november december now that neutral gets a lot closer you can kind of see they're almost dead even and then by november J december january by basically a uh, late fall or early winter the la nina flying surpasses it with up to a 55 percent basically with a neutral at around just 40%. So it does de definitely increase possibly for a La Nina by the late fall and early winter, which is exactly what they stated. As you can get a better idea, we're going to be seeing uh, these uh, temperatures most likely starting to cool off a lot more across portions of the eastern and uh, portions of this overall tropical Atlantic. But let's go ahead and now get a look at the actual long range models. Let's now go ahead and get a look here at the monthly out outlooks here into the NOAA website. And so between August, September, and October, we're going to be getting a look here at what we're looking at temperature-wise and precipitation-wise. So although these are going to be very, very inaccurate, actually, the one thing about these long range on NOAA, like the monthly outlooks, is that they always have the whole country above average. So this is basically useless showing you guys this, but I just wanted to show you so you guys can get a better idea because obviously this will be not even close to accurate, not even... Not even 5% accurate. I mean, this thing's going to be highly inaccurate. I mean, unless the United States is all that warm, but if we're expecting a neutral into La Nina, I doubt it'll be that warm. Uh, but in the early portion and mid portion of the fall, so kind of September and October, we are, or at least Nova's expecting way above average temperatures across portions of the east and the southwest, with slightly below our temperatures across the central United States and Midwest, but overall a pretty warm United States. And they do actually still have that uh, pretty good amount of moisture continuing across the eastern United States with up to, I believe, a 40 to 50 percent for above average precipitation across the mid-Atlantic and northeast coast. While we're seeing a little bit on the drier on the opposite side of the country with, uh, I believe, it's a 40 to 50 percent for below average precipitation across portions of the southwest. Let's not go in and get a look here. So we're looking at. August, September, and October. So let's go ahead and look at that September, October, and November. So still, like I did say, even though it's really far out, they all really want to forecast above average temperatures for the whole United States. They just refuse to show any blues once it's past the 90-day forecast. So still really warm temperatures that, that will continue now for the eastern United States and western United States with still its cooler temperatures across the Midwest. But we will be seeing a little bit more of a warm-up compared to the other August, September range and forecast, but as we get to October, it looks like it's going to continue to warm across the United States. 
with that moisture dramatically dying out now not seeing much moisture whatsoever across the eastern united states and that drier region of below average precipitation will continue to move eastward into the mississippi river basin as we now get into now august or sorry uh october november december now getting into the actual late fall early winter time frame which is when that La Nina is likely to possibly come back you kind of see where we're seeing uh, almost actually at this point average temperatures for the northern united states so it looks like based on this it's going to be cooling off dramatically across the northern and midwestern united states which is exactly what you would see in a la nina year with really really warm temperatures across the south southern and eastern united states as well something you do see with la nina is a moisture above average moisture across the pacific northwest and ohio valley but that is not forecasted, at least as of now. And of course, it is months out, so obviously we're not going to be seeing exact La Nina forecast. And then let's now get into November, December, January, which will be the last stop here since we're looking at mainly for fall, because obviously still November, December. And it looks like that those temperatures continue to cool off all the way up into portions of the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes, which is exactly what you would see there in the La Nina year. But still, not like we're missing any above average precipita precipitation really after the uh, October time frame, but this is still very far out, so these will be highly inaccurate. I'm not sure even why I decided to use these, but I just wanted you guys, just so I can show you guys more things in this video, basically. Let's not go ahead and get a look now at the Arctic Oscillation Forecast. It's actually refreshed because I don't believe this is actually up to date. There we go. So here's looking at the June 23rd Arctic Oscillation Forecast. So we're, we are looking at the Arctic Oscillation, which is basically AO, and it is forecasted. It basically says they add a positive Arctic Oscillation for quite a while here. And what a positive Arctic Oscillation will basically bring is a, a positive Arctic Oscillation will basically bring in La Nina type characteristics or just basically La Nina type characteristics for portions of the United States. So basically a positive Arctic Oscillations will allow that arctic air to kind of stay more towards the canada region which will allow that air to kind of only stick around across the northern united states and as well that positive or that positive arctic oscillation oscillation will kind of prevent that cold air reaching deep into the, the south of the united states even though we do have positive arctic, 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 arctic oscillations we will still be seeing cold fronts but obviously you get the gist of it, but it's forecasted all the way, I believe, here into, uh, this is two weeks from now, so this is Thursday, two weeks from now, so basically early July here. I'm not exactly good with these dates, but it's going to get to the 8th. I had to tilt my head, so we're going to get to the 8th of July, which will be two weeks from now on Thursday. We're still forecasted to kind of not pass that margin and stay, stick at a positive Arctic, Arctic Oscillation. Which will basically bring, like I did say, La Nina or maybe even Enzo neutral forecast, but definitely won't bring in El Nino type characteristics. So let's now go and get a look now at the uh, PNA, which is the Pacific North American Oscillation. And this is something as well we have to keep a close eye on when it comes to stuff like this. So at the moment, we are at a positive Arctic Oscillation. And then with a positive uh, Arctic or positive, um, Ar not, sorry, I'm saying, I'm saying, positive arctic oscillation sorry what a positive pna will bring is basically a nino type characteristics so basically no sorry sorry negative wait yeah all right yeah sorry I, i'm completely lost positive yes we're right now at a positive pna which is basically we're seeing lower pressure across much of the northwest pacific and higher pressure across portions of the tropical pacific basically in near hawaii basically the central pacific so what we're seeing here in a positive PNA is we're going to be seeing El Nino type characteristics in the United States. So what a, what a positive PNA will bring in is allow for that coal there to remain into portions into the southern United States, as well just allow for a lower pressure in the United States, southern United States. And as what a positive PNA will allow is for really, really warm air across much of the portions of the northwest and portions of even central canada so it's going to bring in a bring really strong ridge across canada region allowing for that cold air to not reach anywhere in the region and allowing for that warm air to just hover across canada and northern united states allowing for all that cold air to go down to the deep southeast and south, south central which is exactly what you would see with the positive ao or sorry negative ao which is all kind of correlating 
But as we now get later on to around, let's see here, the uh, July time frame that does go sinks into a into a negative PNA, which will bring in Lanya type characteristics. So the complete opposite of what I just said, it will kind of allow for that warm air to stick around the southern United States because it's going to bring cold air across Canada and the northern United States, but it really cannot get that far south because of that warm air. So basically, it's all going to be correlating towards favoring Lanya type characteristics. We're seeing a we're going to be seeing a negative PNA and a positive AO at the same time, which is exactly what you want to see. So it's kind of all correlating and let's not go ahead and get a look here. Oops, I don't want to do that. There we go. So I want to go ahead and get a look here at the European forecast for the monthly update, just overall temperature. So this is monthly temperature in Celsius. So right now, as we get into June, let's just skip June because we're not focusing on summer, are we? No, we are not. So let's not get into now September. So overall, September is showing some pretty warm air. Obviously, this is not going to be anywhere close to accurate because it's so far out. Like I just say, when it comes to far monthly forecasts like this, models tend to just overall just so warm air across the whole United States without even considering the overall conditions, including AO and PNA. But it looks like it's to be pretty overall slightly above average across much of the country across September, obviously, which will not happen by October. That will continue to really warm up. And then again to now November, that kind of sticks around towards portions of the western United States, and that will continue all the way into December. So it's really just showing a lot of the warm air. Let's not go ahead and get a look here at the overall precipitation, so the monthly forecast. So let's not get into around September. So they are seeing they are they actually are correlating with the NOAA forecast above average precipitation across the eastern United States with below average across portions of the western United States for September by October. That kind of dies off that precipitation across the east. And it stands it really remains mainly of average across the United States, except the Pacific Northwest by October. Same Really wet condition. It's exactly what you want to see for La Nina, but also you want to see above average precipitation in the Ohio Valley and La Nina as well, which is why you see such big storms across this region in La Nina years and not in El Nino years, really. And then after now, November, December, obviously it gets really far out. But I hope you guys, I hope this really helped you guys get a better idea of what we expect for fall. Obviously, I cannot make any maps because so it's way, way too far to, out to make any maps. Maybe by the end of July, I can make some maps for you. But Hope you guys enjoyed it and see you guys later.